Hello everyone and welcome back to our class in artificial intelligence and machine learning in finance. Now in the last video we looked at data pre-processing and this is what we'll do here in this example. Actually this is an example, the German credit data example taken from the UCI machine learning repository. So you can actually download the same data set from the internet and try to um, go through the individual steps of this example um, yourself and I would encourage you to do so. So we'll start by importing the data and we'll read the data by using this read table command in R. Let me just highlight this here. Um, and we are reading it directly from the internet uh, website at UCI. So you can see UCI edu, that's a UCI machine learning repository. We are downloading the data into uh, a data structure, which we at this point we call German credit makes sense to do so. And to get a first feeling of what German credit, the data sample looks like, we simply use um, in the fourth line um, the command dim for dimension. And the dimension of German credit of this array is uh, 1000 rows and 21 columns. So we have 1000 observations of I guess 21 variables. At this point we're not so sure if um, the data consists of rows with four observations and columns for the different variables. This at this point actually is an assumption, but we'll later see it makes sense that yes, we have 1000 observations for um, loans and uh, uh, borrowers, and we have 21 variables. Now, because of this data set having, um, including a lot of features, um, we will first reduce the number of features to make them fit on one slide um, just for expositional purposes. So uh, you can actually have a look at all 21 variables and in um, maybe your exercises you will see that you can also use additional variables, additional features for um, the purpose uh, for which we are doing all this, that is um, forecasting default, default rates. But uh, here for these slides, we wanted to make it fit onto the slide. So we are first reducing um, the number of features. This is what we are doing in the last line. So we are just using uh, columns one through five and 21. So we'll end up with just six columns, but we are keeping all the rows. So we're taking gem credit reducing it to columns 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 21 and then again uh, writing it into um, our data array German credit. Right. Now to explore the structure of the data we are using uh, the command str for structure in R and if we enter str for German credit we'll see that this is a data frame that's uh, the type of object we have here with 1000 observations and six variables. Now the th six variables are, as we've seen before, uh, the columns one, two, three, four, five, and then 21. And they have names which are given by V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, and v, uh, V21. Um, the first one is a factor variable. It has four levels, A11, A12, A13, and so on actually because we only have four levels it's actually a14 and you can see one two four one one four and so on these are the first uh, observations uh, for this column v2 is an integer with a 6 48 12 and so on as first uh, values v3 is again a factor now with five levels v4 is a factor with 10 different levels and so on and most interestingly here for v21 we have an integer that seems to only take on the um, values 1, 2, and again, 1, 1, 2. And so it's probably a variable that looks like a dummy variable, but it doesn't really have a good coding. So we'll later uh, have to switch that as well. Now, the SDR command, as I said, uh, gives us valuable information um, at the very start of our analysis. We are seeing that it's a data frame that has 1,000 observations, six variables, by construction because we only cut out six columns from the initial German credit data uh, frame and features are of type factor and of type integer or type integer. Now the factors 
These represent categorical or ordinal variables and have the advantage that category labels are stored only once. So this requires a lot less uh, memory um, in your R working space and this enables faster computations uh, if, for example, in contrast, you would have used a float or an integer number. Now, the different values for the factors they are referred to as levels. For example, for this first variable, V1, it has the levels A11, A12, A13, and A14. That's actually the way uh, the data frame was coded and programmed. It doesn't really make sense in an economic way. We don't know what the levels are, what kind of variable this is. We need to find out um, what actually variable one is and what the levels mean. But uh, as you can see here, uh, this is the way how it's coded. And we can already see the first uh, observations. So one, two, four, one, one, four. Those are the values of the first variable for the first one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, actually for the first 10 uh, rows or observations. Now, the variable or feature we're usually calling it features in machine learning. Uh, the variable names are not meaningful in an economic way, in an economic sense. So it's a German credit data sample, so we would expect the names to be something like income, uh, marital status, uh, gender, uh, maybe um, location, um, um, assets. Well, that, this would make sense, but v1, v2, v3, uh, we cannot incur, infer what uh, is meant with these variables. So we need, in the next uh, step, we need to rename them. So to understand what is meant by variable one, variable two, and so on. And even if they were, one should always be skeptical about the provided labels. Could be that they are plain wrong. So um, again, uh, check the data before starting your analysis and make sure that you know your data. So um, you can actually um, look at uh, the description here, um, here at the uh, UCI website, there is um, a description of the variables. And if you look through the description, you will see that, for example, attribute one, V1 is actually the status of the existing checking account. And the four levels, it's a very old data sample, it's in Deutschmark. Uh, you can see the four levels are actually coded as the first level, A11, is that the uh, checking account is below zero. Uh, if it's between zero and 200 Deutschmarks, it's level two. Uh, level three is above 200 Deutschmark or salary line for at least one year. And the fourth level is that uh, this customer doesn't have a checking account. The second attribute is the duration in month. Um, and most importantly, if we now switch to attribute 21, the last variable we cut out actually here, this is V21, the 21st column. And this is V21 again. This is actually uh, the rating. One is good, two is bad. So this is later on our outcome variable. Um, we have our borrowers and they have a good or a bad credit rating. And one or two, uh, it is actually more or less um, a dummy variable, but uh, you should probably code it with ones and zeros and not ones and twos. So we have to switch the coding here later on. Now, based on the documentation, we can now assign meaningful variable names. And furthermore, we can transform the data frame, uh, data type in R, into what we call a tibble, uh, which um, in R is a more modern type of a data frame. Now, R was developed a long time ago, some decades ago, and it has evolved over all this time. And some things that were once included in the original base um, um, uh, not package in the um, base version of R um, nowadays is a little bit outdated and isn't as fast and convenient as it could be. So um, the same applies to data frame, which is in the R um, base um, delivery. And Tibble, um, a Tibble as a type of uh, modern data frame, uh, has some advantages over the standard data frame. And you can see uh, this is uh, described in the Tibble tidyverse. 
um, and for example it has an enhanced print method. So we are um, changing it into a tibble. Uh, we first use the documentation to assign uh, meaningful column names. So the call names um, um, command in R uh, for German credit uh, renames the column names and we are using checking account status, duration, credit history, purpose, amount and rating as the new column names instead of V1, V2 and so on. Now let's um, look at the uh, tibble. Uh, we first have to uh, load the library tibble and then we um, um, rewrite German credit as a tibble. So we are taking German credit with which used to be a data frame and with the command as tibble um, we write it over German credit and it's now um, a tibble. Um, let's print some first um, observations here. So if we print German credit, you can see it's a tibble with 1000 lines and six columns and it starts with a factor, an integer, factor, factor, integer, integer. And for example, in line six here, you can see the first observation, which as a11 as the first factor, then six months, A34, uh, A43, uh, 1169, and this is a good rating. Yes, one is good. This is a good rating. And then you have the remaining 990 rows. Now, the first example um, is um, for analysis is summary statistics. Um, this, I think I mentioned this in one of our previous um, lectures and previous videos. You should always have a look at the data itself, at some observations, but also have a look at the summary statistics, because the summary statistics, um, which will give you the mean, um, the first and third quartile, the median, maybe also the standard deviation and volatility and variance of the data, um, these summary statistics will give you a first impression of the sample, not just individual observations, but the sample as a whole. And you will see probably that you might have some outliers. You will see uh, some, um, well, if you can see, for example, here with rating, the mean rating being 1.3, this shows you that most of these uh, observations has a good rating, while only a few have a bad rating. Otherwise, it would be closer to two. Obviously, if you were to see the minimum not being one or the maximum not being two, you would know that actually something's off because the variable, uh, this factor variable is defined only to have um, um, observations with the ones and twos. So something would be off. Now, as you can see here uh, with the amount, um, this might be an outlier, 18,000 uh, could be, would have to check this. Credit rating, you can see the more or less the histogram for those five levels. Everything seems to be uh, around 832. Uh, duration is between four and 72 months. Seems to be okay. So use the summary statistics to um, check your data and see if something's off. If something doesn't make sense economically, always a good starting point. Now next, we need to transform the integer variables into numeric float ones because we want to facilitate later processing of the data. If we use float numbers, this makes computations easier. And for this and some further operations, we rely on the DPLYR package. And here on this slide, you have some uh, documentation from the website on which DPLYR is um, provided. It's a grammar for data manipulation providing a consistent set of verbs that help you solve the most common data manipulation challenges. You can do all this in R without the help of this package, but this is much more convenient. For example, mutate is a function, is a command that adds new variables that are functions of existing variables. So you can use existing variables and you can simply add new ones that are functions in old ones. For example, if you need uh, twice the amount, if you want to multiply the amount by five, that could be one um, mutation of a, an existing variable. Select picks variables based on their names. Filter picks cases based on their values. 
Summarize reduces multiple values down to a single summary and arrange changes the ordering of the rows. So many um, actually convenient functions uh, if you have to do data manipulation all over and over again. And this is why we're relying on this package here. It's also a part of the Tidyverse, which is a collection of R packages that are specifically designed for data science and machine learning. And uh, again, everything is based on the Tibble uh, data structure as uh, a modern version of the data frame. So we'll adjust the variable names, which were again still um, quite um, inconvenient. And we first transform the integer variables to numeric ones, to float numbers. And we use the DPLYR style notation with the pipe operator. So German credit is now German credit, and this is the pipe operator. And we mutate if is integer as numeric. So we're changing, changing the integers to numerics. We transform rating into a factor. It's not yet, if you go back, it's still an integer. It's still an integer that has ones and twos. If we were to include three, uh, R wouldn't, uh, wouldn't make a problem. It would still accept a three, but it, uh, the three wouldn't make sense. So in order for rating only to have the ones and twos as levels, we need to change this from integer uh, to a factor. So German credit, German credit, pipe operator mutate rating equals a factor. And we say it's now rating. Uh, actually, uh, this is the original variable. We take the integer variable as input for the factor uh, function. And we say, OK, we mutate and rating now as to be a factor based from the old rating variable. And the labels are now good and bad. So that's how we do this. And last but not least, we show the percentage of good, bad rated credit applications. So we do a table, German credit dollar rating, which is um, the rating column, divided by n row, the number of rows in German credit. This is 1000. Uh, but if we don't know this, then simply calculate the number of rows using the n row command. And as you can see, we have 70% good credits, good loans, and 30% bad loans. So on the next slides and in the next video, we will continue this data pre-processing and data manipulation um, analysis. Uh, next, we'll concentrate on the ratio weight of evidence, um, but that's up to the next video. So thank you and uh, hopefully see you in the next video.